Hey, everybody. My name is Duchess, and this is where we talk about true crime and missing cases, and I appreciate all of you joining me on Monday afternoon. How was the eclipse? Uh, Where you guys are at, I'm here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and um, honestly, I posted a TikTok because (laughs) I couldn't really see anything because I didn't have my special glasses. But then my neighbor came over and she let me borrow her daughter's glasses. And um, it was definitely a crescent for sure. So um, um, I did snag this little picture um, of the of the sun today. I thought it was really cool. Um, But it looks like that Arkansas Pennsylvania, like there's a whole line of places that um, were like in the 100% range. I saw some really cool pictures. I was like everyone else. I had to watch it on YouTube, guys. Um, So (laughs) it was really, it was really awesome. So I remember that my mom had a newspaper article from 1979, and I saw that other people were sharing it too, of where There was a uh, solar eclipse in 79. I was um, five years old. And the next eclipse that was going to be like that um, was going to be in 2024. And I thought that was really cool um, that my mom had saved. uh, My mom saves all of this. She has all of these almanacs, all of that stuff. So it was really cool. So I wanted to thank everybody for joining me. We're going to talk about this missing voter. Um, Once again, guys, we have another voter that is missing in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of North Carolina. Um, If you guys have not followed my channel before, uh, last year in January, Tyler Doyle went missing in his John boat uh, while he was duck hunting near the jetty, and that is on the North Carolina and South Carolina line, and he was never recovered. Um, SLED has now taken over that investigation, and they are still conducting interviews um, with people that Tyler may have spoken to, um, including, I guess, his family members, um, but he has never been recovered um, from the ocean. So um, I got a phone call on Saturday um, from one of my friends who is an uh, avid fisherman, and he let me know that he heard the Coast Guard make a call out on Saturday that um, this boater was supposed to come back in after going out on uh, south into Southport, um, out to Frying Pan Shoals, and we're going to look at that area so I can take you through what that looks like. He was going out fishing for Wahoo, um, but he did go out by himself. And I always recommend for people to never go out into the ocean by yourself because you never know what can happen. It's rough out there. Um, and anything Anything is possible. So, and he has not returned. Um, I did see several um, helicopters and airplanes um, in flight this morning uh, doing a grid search for him. Um, I did kind of take a trip up there to see if there was anything that I could really see. Um, So we're going to take a look and find out exactly what we know. So I appreciate you guys being here. If you would take the time to crush the like button and share this video out. I don't know if anybody's talking about this case, but I really do hope they find this gentleman. So let's take a look. This is... um, This is the flyer that I made for Jeffrey Kale. Um, He's missing out of Oak Island, Brunswick County, North Carolina. That's where he took his boat out. That is right next to Southport, North Carolina. Um, The U.S. Coast Guard sector of North Carolina and the Oak Island Police Department rescue crews are searching for Jeffrey Kale, age 47. He was last seen around 4 p.m. on Saturday aboard a 32-foot center console boat. And this is actually the boat right here, guys. Um, He did have a previous boat 
that was registered in South Carolina, but he does have a different boat now. And I do think I have a picture uh, that someone sent me of that boat that was taken. Um, yeah, there's the boat at his house. Um, he is actually from Clover area, um, which is kind of up near the Charlotte area. Um, this It's a 32-foot Cape Horn Black. He has Suzuki 350 motors on it. He left the River Channel in Southport, North Carolina, headed to the Blackjack area. That's also around Steeples, around 3 to 4 uh, yesterday afternoon. I feel like that's kind of late in the day to be going out fishing for um, Wahoo and Mahi. I guess maybe he didn't intend on staying out there a long time. <clears throat> maybe just a couple of hours. Um, this initial report went out and this is what my friend heard. Um, if cited, please call the Coast Guard on Marine Channel 1216 and 06. Um, and this went out on the 7th at 6 a.m. So this was really scary. Um, apparently he was supposed to be back in at a certain time and he didn't show up and he has not contacted his family. And this is why, thank you, Michelle, for dropping that. This is why we have Tyler's Beacon Law petition. This is a petition that I started for the family and it would require um, here in South Carolina, this is something that Tyler's family wanted. If you purchase a hunting license or a fishing license um, here in South Carolina, they would like for South Carolina to issue a beacon uh, to each hunter and fisherman in the event there is an accident or something happens that you don't know what you might be faced with, it would automatically, you could hit the uh, button on that beacon and it would start sending out a signal. You can program, it would automatically call 911 uh, and you can program in, for some beacons, you can program in up to six phone numbers. It would constantly be dropping your location as it changed from your phone um, and from that beacon, and it would also um, be sending out an, an emergency alert to all of those numbers as well as 911. Um, some people didn't want to sign on for that because they felt like it would be expensive. But if you're a hunter or a fisherman, why would you not want to have something like this? I know a lot of fishermen and hunters here in my state that already have these beacons that they buy of their own free will in the event there is an accident. Um, you got to think of your family. Like if you're going to go out fishing by yourself, why would you not want to have a beacon in the event that you have boat trouble? If there was a freak accident, you just never know. You just attach that beacon to your life jacket and they are waterproof for, I think, up to 72 hours and some of them even longer. Um, and if this gentleman had a beacon on, they would be able to track him and find him immediately. So if you would go over there and click on that link and just consider reading about um, this beacon and consider signing and sharing that, I would be so grateful. Let me take a look. This is another picture of Jeffrey. He's obviously um, really into fishing. This is the first picture that I saw. Um, obviously, he's standing here with a big cruise boat in the background. And here's a picture. It looks like this is him and his wife. I did see this. This was... Uh, one of the first posts that I actually saw, Kale was last seen around 4 p.m. on Saturday in his 32-foot Cape Horn boat with hull number NC4431FA. Rescue crews have been searching between the fishing areas of Blackjack and Steeples. Kale, who is from Clover, South Carolina, owns a landscaping business in Charlotte. 
Anyone with information about Jeffrey Kale's whereabouts is asked to call 911 immediately, and witnesses may also call the U.S. Coast Guard at 910-343-3880. And all of this information is on his flyer. I have shared this out on my social media, so if you see this flyer, please do share it everywhere. Um, we have a lot of people that are fishing out here on the water, so I'm trying to get this flyer spread around and just keeping people alerted that if they see something, say something. If you're out there on the water and something is in the water or you may have seen Jeffrey while he was out on the water, please, please, please report it because I know his family um, must be so very worried about him. Um, I did also see this was from the Oak Island Police Department, and this is about maybe about 30 minutes north of where I am in South Carolina. I'm actually on the North and South Carolina line, um, and they are actively participating in the investigation. They do have search and rescue teams, and I know they're <clears throat> searching up near Frying Pan Shoals, and I'm going to show you guys what that actually looks like. It looks like one of these oil rigs that's kind of just sitting out there um, in the water that has been unused for quite a few years, but it has formed a natural reef out there and the fishing out there is wonderful. And there's a lot of people that go fishing out there. So I'm hoping that someone will be able to uh, locate Jeffrey Kill as soon as possible. Um, like I said, I've been seeing the search grid that, that was going on this morning. They've been searching since Saturday. But as you guys know, the Coast Guard is normally only activated for anywhere from between 24 to 72 hours, and then they will call off the search. So it, it really concerns me because it's already been this much time that's transpired. And I don't want this man to not be found. Um, it's that time of year. It was uh, 50 degrees this morning when I got up at 6. So it's not as cold as it was when Tyler went missing. But nonetheless, do you have an accident? You fall off the boat, you hit your head, you could go under. And he doesn't have anybody there on the boat with him. And that, that really, really concerns me. So um, I'm going to go over here and share my screen. Let's see if we've got a couple of articles that we can take a look at. Go over here to the chat real quick, real quick and see what you guys are saying. Hey, BHB, thank you so much for being here. Hey, Nonsense. Hope you're doing good. Thanks for being here, Turtle Madness. Hope everybody's doing well, enjoying this crazy eclipse that we're having. Mama Bear, so good to see you. Hey, everyone, this is 30 minutes for me. I hope and pray they find him. Mama Bear, gracious, this is, it's scary. Hey, Carolina girl, I live in Raleigh and heard about this. I hope he is just lost. I hope so too, but with a 30 foot, 32 foot Cape Horn, I mean, he's probably got... tracking and scanners and all kinds of radios and things on the boat. So that, that really concerns me. Hey, fixing to snap. I'm from South Carolina and I think it's a great idea. I appreciate that. Yeah. Please go over and check out that Tyler's Beacon Law petition that I started. <clears throat> I would really appreciate it. And I know Tyler's family would appreciate it if you would take a look into that. And, you know, if it's something that you guys if you are, have a state that's on the ocean or have has a lot of waters, like Florida has a lot of lakes and things like that, like, you know, this is something that may need to go nationwide. We're just trying to get it started here in South Carolina, and we only have about 6,000 signatures. So <clears throat> Island Girl says, beacons are life-saving. Also, when we boat, always tell a friend, family member, etc., where you are headed. The waters can turn quick. That is exactly right. 
32 footers should have been even stable. Even out on Lake Michigan, they are more than adequate. Yeah, see, Tyler went out in a John boat, which was like 16 feet. Um, so that's that's a lot different. I mean, this boat is very capable of being out in the ocean. This is a fishing boat that is designed to be out in the ocean water. So it just worries me. But we're going to take a look at some things. Hey, Lisa Mounts, I'm glad to see you. I hope you're doing well. Rev Fan Grandma, good evening. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Act right, people. So glad to see you. I hope you've been doing well. Hadn't seen you around in a hot minute. I hadn't been around on YouTube. There's been just so much going on on these YouTube streets, y'all. Just can't have to take time and woosaw from all of the things. Hey, Victoria. I'm so glad to see you. <clears throat> yeah, Mama Bear. Well, I'll have them to drop that. They sure will. And I appreciate y'all being here. I'm going to share my screen now. Because I want to go over here. Oh, you know what I need to do before I do that? I do need to look up. I need to get into my Facebook. Because there was something interesting that I wanted to show you guys too. Because it looks like that he posted a video before he went missing. I just thought it was interesting. Like he's on the water. Pretty sure that's what I saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I wanted to make sure that I, you know, took a look at that. Here we go. Okay. All right, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. All right. So this was a little clip that I saw out of Queen City News, which is local to Charlotte, North Carolina. And um, they, they really have not put out a lot of information about this missing guy. So, um, but there may not be a lot of information to share. So we do want to share the accurate information about what we know. So, um, let me take myself off of this. We'll make my full layout. That I think that'll be easier for you guys to see. If I do it like that. Yeah, Island Girl, a John boat? No, it, that's really not designed <laughs> To, uh, to be out in the ocean, for sure. Great for lakes, but probably not in the ocean. It kind of gets rough out there. All right, here we go. The Coast Guard is looking for a South Carolina man who went missing during a recent fishing trip. Officials say that Jeffrey Kale from Clover was last seen around 4 Saturday afternoon in Southport. Kale's family reported him missing around 1030 Saturday night. Yesterday, crews from Elizabeth City and Oak Island were checking areas off the coast. They are searching fishing areas about 30 miles southeast of Southport. All right. See, not a lot. Not a lot at all. So then I found this article from WSOC Charlotte, and it says a man from Clover went missing while boating off the coast of North Carolina. The U.S. Coast Guard and Oak Island Police Department say Jeffrey Kale went fishing on Saturday, leaving from the Southport Wildlife Boat Ramp. And we're going to take a look at all of that. Um, the Coast Guard says they're searching the Atlantic between Blackjack and Steeples, and they're looking around where he's fished before. And this photo is what Kale's boat looks like on the water. Hey, Kim Holmes. Hey, Shorty. Hey, Rhonda. Thank y'all for joining me. 
Shorty says, this kind of hits a little bit. I lived on Oak Island for over 15 years and just recently sold my mother's home there. Shorty, I didn't know you were so close to me. This is about 30 minutes from me, and we we searched all up, all the way to Southport, you know, when Tyler went missing. We were up in Sunset Beach, Holden Beach. You know, we there were people that went all the way up to the Cape Fear River. Um, because, you know, as you know, if any of you are familiar with the coast of North Carolina, Frying Pan Shoals uh, is, in fact, um, off of that tip. And what I'm going to show you what that looks like. We're going to go to Google Earth and we're going to look at all the things so I can show you. And, of course, they are asking for anyone to call 911 or the local Coast Guard So, um, it looks like here, I was hoping they were going to, uh, let's see, let's see what this one says here. I have to start this one over because it's muted. Oh, it's not going to let me do it because it's got an ad blocker on it. Oh, well, don't play it then. It'll just have to be okay. Okay, so we're not going to play that one. Oh, did you really? You went to South Brunswick? Very cool. I have some friends in Delaware. Those bridges scare me up there. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. After that, that ship hit that bridge, like, I don't know. There's just... <laughs> It gives me the heebie-jeebies. <clears throat> so check this out. This is um, this is his page. And this was a video that I saw posted on his page. So I heard the trip undertaken. Going down. I heard he got these up going yeah, crazy. Just me and the fishing pole. <laughs> Going down. I heard he got these up going yeah, crazy. Just me and the fishing pole. Yeah, yeah. So I heard the trip undertaken. Going down. I heard he got these up going yeah, crazy. Just me and the fishing pole. Yeah. 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 Mama Bear says, Duchess, I used to live in Holden Beach and worked with Coastline Rescue Squad till they shut down. I joined in 2004. It sucks they're no longer there and I miss them and now I'm with a different department. That's really cool, Mama Bear. Thank you so much for your service. And you graduated from West Brunswick High School in Chalope. You guys are not that far from me. That is so amazing. If you are ever down here in Myrtle Beach, please let me know. We'll have to I have a lot of people that come down here to vacation that subscribe to my channel and they're like, hey, if you're if if I'm in town, can can we meet up and say, hey, I have a lot of people that come and meet up with me and give me hugs. And, you know, it's so nice to meet you guys in, in person. And I think that's really cool. And I appreciate all of y'all being here because for a lot of people that subscribe to my channel, the reason they're here is because I cover a lot of local cases in the Carolinas because, guys, that's where I live. So I always want to keep people informed about, you know, what's going on here locally. But I do cover missing cases all over. If people send me a case. I know somebody recently sent me a case out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, that they wanted to know if I would cover. So I'm, I'm doing some research on that case. We have a lot of missing people out of Cumberland County. Um, and I do cover a lot of cases in the Carolinas. So um and I tell people, if you there's a case that I haven't talked about or you haven't seen me make a flyer, like, please feel free to send me an article um, and let me know that you would like for me to cover it. And I'll certainly do my best to do that. So, yeah, Mama Bear, let me know. Let me know. I'm in North Myrtle Beach. Yeah, absolutely. Don't y'all think this is crazy? This video, um, he posted this. Let me look. This was posted 
April the 6th at 3.50 p.m. So he's going out on his boat right here. And it's obvious that he's by himself. He's got his just his fishing poles, and you can see him headed out into the ocean on this. Okay, I'm gonna let this play for a second because I want to see something. I mean, that right there, I would I need to be able to turn this, but if you okay, turn your head sideways for me. To the right, because <laughs> that's what I'm doing. My neck. Oh Lord, I'm gonna have to clip it so I can. I'm gonna. Ha I'm gonna definitely take this video and I'm gonna put it into my Kind Master app so I can straighten it up. But he, this is him going out of the inlet right there in Southport. That's exactly where this is, and I'm gonna show you, uh, Shorty. I'm not saying. Listen. I understand because I get it. That was one of my first things that gave me the chills was when I heard him on this video. I was I was worried that. Is it possible he was intoxicated like we don't know? So I, I do understand that you're not trying to be negative. Alan Time says we we talked back and forth about Amber. You're just across the mouth of the Cape Fear. <clears throat> oh, Curie Beach. I love Curie Beach. I have some friends in, in Carolina Beach. So um, it is. It is sad. You just don't know. Yeah, this is his Facebook page. This is his boat. Kim. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's him. That's his boat. And then you can see here under the comments, his friend says, should have called, I'd have been there. Ben Hogan says, I wish you weren't alone. And then Jeannie Ross Lang says, dang it, I wish you weren't alone, buddy. Makes me feel sad. You know, I can't imagine what his family must be going through right now. So, um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a minute because I'm going to have to pull up my Google Earth. So, I've got to log out of uh, probably my YouTube, probably the best. Because it takes up so much CPU. So I'm going to try to get on here. And I'm going to let you guys take a look at this area. Um, of course, Shorty and Island Time and Mama Bear, like, they know what I'm talking about. Um, now, I did, I will tell you that I did drag Michelle. <laughs> out to the jetty. And she swears that I made her walk 14 miles. But it was only two miles. And it's a long walk. And that jetty is scary. And she could see how rough the water was out there. It can get really rough. It can get really rough out there. Coast Guard should have seen the boat circling till it ran out of gas or if it flipped. Shouldn't his position been live for at least enough time to get triangulation? Well, that's what I'm thinking. If you've got a 32-foot Cape Horn boat. I mean, I'm going to look at this right now, too. Um, I 
I mean, let's let's see what, what I mean. What is what is on one of these boats, right? I mean, surely there has to be things, right? I mean, CapeHornBoats.com. This is the boat. I mean, this is a nice boat, guys. Kim said, we would never leave the bay in boats like that. I mean, this is designed for fishing. I mean, is it designed for? I mean, you, I mean, you can see these people are out here fishing in the ocean, clearly. You can't catch that in a lake. <laughs> you can't even catch that well. I don't think you can catch that in the waterway. Hey puppy, are you wanting to be on the live stream again? You like to you like to be live. You you're just like Petra. You like attention. That's a big old fishy, isn't it? She's looking at this fish, y'all. Carolina girl says I'm about 15 minutes from Clover. I, I know exactly where all of that is. Yes, girl. <clears throat> I can't tell you how many times I've been through Clover. That's a big old fish, ain't it? I hear I hear the Duke. He's coming home from work. He's walking in the door right now. There's a sailfish. So they're doing some big catches with these boats. So the length is 31 feet and 10 inches. Hang on one second. Duke says hey to everybody. <laughs> hey everybody okay um <clears throat> let's see dead rise 23 degrees the whole weight 5400 pounds maximum horsepower 800 it holds 273 gallons of fuel so babe a 32 foot boat is capable of going in the ocean right Yes, absolutely, he says. It lives in the open ocean where people seldom venture. The legendary rough water performance range and appetite for offshore success make Cape Horn boats the predator of the open water. It's time you see for yourself. Get a quote. Oh, we don't need a quote. Give me a video. Show me what we're working with. Like, what kind of boat are we dealing with here? I want to know what all of the <clears throat> specifications, like what kind of stuff can you get on this boat? Foam-filled bullet bulletproof hulls. Do we need bulletproof hulls? I'm just asking for a friend. I mean, in the true crime community, I feel like if I'm ever going to buy a boat, I'm going to now always say, by the way, <clears throat> do you have a, a hull that is bulletproof? Because I feel like that's the standard now. Being here. He is on the boat that I'm showing, Island Girl. The The last missing boater that I covered was Tyler Doyle. And if you want to go back and watch those live streams and videos, they are posted on my channel. Um, we had another missing boater, which went missing. I live on the waterway on the North and South Carolina line. And he went missing in the ocean and his he was never recovered. His John boat was recovered, but he was never found. This guy... Um, actually went out in this boat right here in this Cape Horn, which is fully capable of being in the ocean. We were basically saying that the John boat would be not be something that you would want to be out in the ocean 
in. And he actually was out in the ocean and his uh, boat began to fill up with water, supposedly, according to the 911 call. He made several calls um, before telling the person that was uh, his last phone call that um, he was sinking and he was scared and he was worried that he wasn't going to make it. And they've never found him. So, and his family is seeking answers. So I encourage you, if you haven't seen the Tyler Doyle case, please go over and watch those videos. It's it's a heartbreaking story that lingers of foul play and the family is searching for answers. So um, this boat here, however, uh, they are based out of Milton, Florida, it looks like. And these boats right here are fully um, capable of going out into the ocean. This is not a 16-foot John boat. <clears throat> so, you know, you're, it's not the same situation. Tyler was actually duck hunting in a place that he shouldn't have been. He shouldn't have been out there at the jetty, which is where the waterway actually opens up into the ocean. Um, it was a very sad situation. So this, you know, thank you, BHB. BHB says she's glad you're feeling better, babe. That's blue-haired bingo, babe. I know he thinks I'm crazy. Or that we're all, he probably thinks we're all crazy, but I think this is, um, this is very interesting. It's good. It's easy, easier when you're, when you know what you're dealing with, because, you know, once we saw Tyler's boat, we were like, oh my gosh, like, what are you doing out in the ocean in that? But <clears throat> he has an offshore boat and that is what they have said. This is, this is basically like his boat right here, the 220S. So, um, specifications it doesn't features at a glance that's what i'm looking for the options so it's got a 10-year whole warranty okay blah 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 it's, it's got a compass wind last it's got a t-top with electronics box hard top uh crow's nest console headroom i'm just looking down because i want to know you know what this what this actually comes with if it and it tells you here if it's standard optional or not available electronic steering Island Girl, thank you so much for gifting a membership and cupcakes. Cupcakes, you are the recipient. Please thank Island Girl for gifting you a membership. Island Girl, that was so kind of you to do that. Thank you so much. I just happened to look down at my phone and see that. You know, I just, I want to know, like, what is the standard things that come on these boats? And if they have to buy any, oh, sure. I'm searching something on my phone. I want to see something. Because, you know, you want to know if they have some type of, like, <clears throat> marine tracking system, basically, or, a, like, a because that would be a beacon. Normally, but a lot of these boats, you know, will come installed with. Or people that have these boats or, you know, they really should have these things like an ocean signal rescue 
that's a PLB one. That's a personal locator beacon. And those have to be manually activated. And then there's an MOB. And those are designed for like if you have a man overboard situation. And that would activate if you were to become immersed in the water and you couldn't activate it on your own. So you see how like those things could be really important because you never know when you're going to be <clears throat> in an accident. I'm going to ask my phone a question. Hang on. Do Cape Horn boats come with marine tracker systems or beacons? It says, no, most private small craft do not have installed navigation instruments like, you know, beyond like a simple magnetic compass. You know, a lot of people have to have those added on. So that's why we're not seeing it on this document. But I mean, I'm sure he had a radio receiver, right? I mean, I'm just asking. Because, I mean, mobile phones are about, they're good for about, what, 10 miles, I think, off the coast. Let me go back over here and see what y'all are saying in chat. Because I can't see my chat, y'all, when I'm sharing my screen. <clears throat> thoughts. I need thoughts. I need some fishermen in this chat. Am I going to have to call my neighbor? Please don't make me call my neighbor. Mama Bear says, my grandpa had a big boat that you can drive on the top and drive on the inside and it was made for the ocean it almost flipped one time on us the ocean can be very dangerous even if you know yeah um and sometimes there's people that you're not sure if they should be driving a boat so babe what is your thoughts like obviously it says that most small boats do not come with like a tracking system and you know, and most people like use their phones. They come with a magnetic compass. Like if you want to have something like that on your boat, you have to get it like installed extra. Like this guy has a Cape Horn boat. It doesn't say on the specifications. Like if you look at, can, can you look at these specifications and tell me if you, what you see here? Hang on guys. We have to get the Duke on this because, you know, I have to know the, the, the answers to these things. Okay. So Did you know it has a bulletproof hole? It's a foam-filled hole that's bulletproof. Do we need? Do you need that? Do you need a bulletproof hole? <laughs> Look, it even has these insulated drink coolers. It's got the fish box. I'm not sure what a transom gate is, but live well. Uh, okay, it's got a T-top with electronics box. There's the compass. There's a windlass. Um. Like, it, you, it doesn't have that. It just has the compass. This is why personal locator Which beacons one? are so important. Which one does he have? He has this one right here, this 220. This is his boat. S. It's a nice boat. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. They're made in Florida. He's from Clover, South so Carolina. It's a 22 foot boat. Yeah. Well, no, it's a 32. No, it's not. It's 22. That's what 220S is. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I had the wrong one. I thought it was the. Well, it's an offshore. I thought it said it was an off. I'm pretty sure he said it was an offshore. He said it was a 32. <coughs> Wait, okay. I can't. 32T. See? Up. Uh, Oh, it's a tournament. Excuse me. Still an offshore boat. Okay, maybe it does have something on that. Oh, look at those seats. Okay, guys, I'm looking at the wrong boat. That still looks like his boat, features. though. Okay, let's look at these features. See, that's why I have to get the Duke in here. Because, listen, I don't have a boat. This is not my thing. Okay, here we go. Same thing. It's got the compass in the windlass. <coughs> That's all the standard stuff. 
and we're looking at this one right here. Yes, okay. that tells you if it's standard, optional, or not available. Now, but it still is not going to have that. You see what I'm saying? That's my point, is it doesn't matter which one you have, I guess. They're not going to come with it. Come, Yes, come tell us all about it, Duke Michelle said. Well, any idiot that goes out fishing in the ocean is going to have the extras. You think so? Oh, yeah. If he spends that much money on it, what's another few thousand bucks? I mean, I can't foresee somebody not having that. I mean, in my opinion. He'll have the GPS. He'll have satellite, radio, uh, phone, now, all that. Now, what about. May days and stuff. Now, what, what about uh, our neighbor over here? Does he, what does he have all. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, it's got it all. And his is like, what, 27 foot? 28. 28 foot. And, he's, and he has the marine GPS and all that installed. But see why the locator beacon is so important? You've got the immersible one, the MOB, man overboard. You know, you should always be wearing your life jacket, and you should always have that on board. In the instance you get thrown overboard, it will automatically set off that beacon and uh, send that signal out to 911. Some of these are programmable with up to five to eight numbers. It will send out your location to those numbers and it will also continue to send out alerts that you know it's still activated and they're waterproof for up to 72 hours so you see if you have the beacon on like they would know exactly where he is and this is another reason why signing the petition for tyler's beacon is so important right babe that's right you signed the petition yourself didn't you i did okay See, he's a he's a good hubby. Duke is Duke is awesome. Dukey is tired. Okay, Dukey is tired. I'm gonna go outside. Okay, go outside and take pup pup. It's time for her to eat. Come on, boogie. Go enjoy yourself, Mama Bear. That sounds like so much fun. A ride on the four wheeler. She's gonna be four. Oh my goodness. Well, go enjoy yourself. Love you too. Thanks for being here. Yes, that's exactly right, Chris. And that's important. You know, but that um, you know, they do have the other kind where you can actually press it, you know, if you need it. So let's say, okay, you didn't fall in the water, but what if somebody accidentally shoots you? Because you're in a nefarious situation or somebody's trying to hurt you. Somebody's after you. What if somebody's chasing you down in another boat? I mean, I know that sounds like something you would see in a movie. But y'all, anything's possible. This is 2024, you know. I mean, it sounds terrible. And they, yes, Island Girl, they do have flares. I just, I have concerns like what could have possibly happened. You know? Hey, Crystal. I hope everything went well today. Love you. I appreciate you listening. Yeah, he should have the radio. Yeah, I can just see that. That would, that, that would be the people who would need that. But, you know, I mean... The Duke speaks and everybody stops talking. Yeah, he could have had something as simple as a leak. That's why I don't feel comfortable. I would not feel comfortable if my husband got on a boat and went out there by himself. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, he last went out. Um, let me get back over here. I'm going to look at my. Let's see. I had it in one of these posts where he went out from. I think it was up here. This is what my friends hit me. From the River Channel. Okay. Yeah. Okay.
I have have a few friends that live in Southport, and that's one of our favorite places to go eat at Provision. Um, I'm sure Island Girl and a bunch of other people know where Provision is. It's one of my favorite places to eat. Check the recalls on that making model. That's a good idea, Lisa. Okay, I'm looking over here to see if we can get on down here to Southport. So, Because I want you guys to take a look at this so we can, you know, see it together. Because if you're not from this area, it's kind of really hard to understand. You were just, I haven't ate there since last summer and I really need to get down there. We have some really good seafood restaurants here. Clark Seafood is my favorite place to eat though. Because A, it's five minutes from my house, and it's just right there on the waterway, and they're excellent. If you come to Little River, South Carolina, I definitely recommend Clark Seafood. It is top-notch. We eat there at least two times a week. Um, so, and I'm not getting paid by Clark's, but I'm going to tell them that I'm advertising for them on my channel. Ha. Huh. But Michelle's been there, and so has Allie, and I hope they enjoyed it. Because it's our favorite place. All right, give me one second. <clears throat> I do love frying pan too. My friend from Carolina Beach, her dad lives there. They call him the mayor. And uh, we always meet up there and eat. And we haven't been there in a while. So I need we need to get back together and go up there and eat. Lots of great places that have calabash style food. And if you don't know what calabash style is, that is a southern delicacy, how we fry our fish and all of our seafood. Named after Calabash, North Carolina, which is less than 10 minutes from my house. Lots of, we'll have to do a little walk through. I'll have to take you on some walks to all the cool places soon. All right, I'm going to share my screen. We're going to take a look at this Google map. <clears throat> Southport is a city in Brunswick County, North Carolina, United States, near the mouth of the Cape Fear River. Its population was 3,828 as of the 2018 census. Okay. So, let's take a look. Here I am, way down here, okay? If you know anything about the Tyler Doyle case, this is the jetty where I live. He put his boat in behind my house. He came all the way down this waterway out to the mouth of this jetty, and his boat was out here between the North and South Carolina line and ended up in the ocean. And he's never been found. And they searched all along these borders for him. And there's still no answers. So we follow North Carolina on up to Ocean Isle Beach. Then we have Holden Beach. And of course, the Intercoastal Waterway still runs all the way up, you know, from that's just right outside my door, you know. Uh, it still runs all, all the way up the coast. <clears throat> so then we're getting on up here, and there's Oak Island. My parents had a house there in the 80s. We used to go there all the time. My dad's friend used to own uh, uh, the country club. Parents, the place uh, that they had. Hurricanes. It's bad, bad up in this area. So this is Oak Island. And as you can see, this is the jutted point of North Carolina right here. Yeah, I'm actually on, right on the inside of South Carolina. I'm, I'm on the waterway part. 
Yeah, my friend lives in Carolina Beach. She works at the hospital up there. Yep, see, there's Curie Beach right there. See, we're not, not that far apart. See? Shh, shh. But look at frying pan shoals. This is key, guys. You see how that, you can see that from space, by the way. Did you guys know that? Do you see that sticking out where it says Southport? Y'all, that's like this huge reef out there. Um, and basically, frying pan shoals is like a shifting area of shoals that is uh, um, basically right off the Cape Fear back up into this area. Okay, there's Bald Head Island. And it goes right back up. It here by Curie. As you can see, Wilmington is right there. That's, that's a big city. A lot of people know Wilmington. Um, the shoal is about 28 miles long, and it looks like a frying pan. Um, and this is like, um, it has excellent fishing out there. So, um, I wonder if it'll take us to like the, this is, uh, basically it, there's the reason that this is so important is because the shoals are known for a high number of shipwrecks found in the region. Um, because this is part of the graveyard of the Atlantic. If you guys remember studying that in school, uh, we had to study about that. Um, I think from 94 to 2008, there was like 130 new shipwreck locations that have been discovered in this area. Um, these were, this place was marked on the map, I think back in 1700s. So, um, it's very interesting. So this frying pan tower, let's see if we can look that up on here. My friend sent me a picture one time and it had Dollar General on Frying Pan Tower and it was the funniest thing I had ever seen. Um, here, okay, look. Oh, it's no, don't take me over there. I want it to go no to the actual frying pan. Like, is it will it show me frying pan? I don't know if it will from Google Earth. Can you actually see it from Google Earth? Frying pan shoals. Ah, that's what I want to see. Ta-da! Somebody sent me a picture, and instead of that building, it had a Dollar General on it. And I was like, that's pretty accurate, because I feel like there is a Dollar General, like, every two miles in South Carolina. So, um... And Bald Head Light and Oak Island Lighthouse, like that is why we have so many lighthouses is because, you know, the shipwrecks, because you never know when it's you're going to run into these um, these shoal areas. So. Um, but we have like 15 light station coordinates in that area, and there's actually a live webcam that you can look at on YouTube from this area. I don't know if you guys have ever checked that out before, um, but I thought that was pretty cool. Really, that's interesting. Wilmington's population is, has surpassed that. I can't believe that because we have a lot of people that live here. We are really growing fast, for sure. Hey, Ryan, it's good to see you. So, you know, I just want to make sure, like, because there's a lot of people that don't know about this. And so you have to think about it. There's 130 shipwrecks out here. I mean, this place is huge. This is where he was going. 
it says that he left out of Southport, out of the river. So here's the Elizabeth River. So see, if he was in Oak Island, he could have put in, you know, he could have put his boat in anywhere. Could have put his boat in in Southport. He could have done it here at Oak Island. Or he could have went over here. You can see there's marine marinas and stuff that are right here. That's a beautiful historic river walk right there. There's frying pan right there. The restaurant. It's a great place to eat. Um, so he would have came out of this channel right here, probably where this waterway is. There's lots of little places you can put your boat in. <clears throat> This would have been, you remember the video? Do you guys remember the video he was shooting on the Facebook? And you could see off in the distance, like it looked like there was a line of like an island in front of him. It's because he's looking at this. I mean, that's what you're looking at. You're looking over here at Fort Caswell. You know, because you have to go outside of that in order to get out into the ocean. So he would have came out of the mouth of the Cape Fear River, basically, is what they're saying. And gone right here. So see, it's it's not the distance from where he was going is not that far. So if you went out at four o'clock, he probably only planned to stay out there a couple of hours and come back before dark. Let's go to the chat because I need to hear your thoughts or see your thoughts, rather. How far is that from Topsail? Uh, let me ask my phone. How far is Frying Pan Shoals from Topsail Beach? 43.4 miles. Hey, Susan, I good to see you. Thank you for being here. Y'all, please smash the like button. If you don't mind, it helps this to get into the algorithm and maybe more people will see it and they can contribute their thoughts on this. If you know any fishermen that are interested in talking about this that might want to reach out to me and give me their thoughts, if you live in this area or if you know Jeffrey Kale, um, let me know. Let me know if you know this man. We want to keep putting his information out there because I just pray that he is found, y'all. Listen, this guy looks like he's a serious boater. I feel like for sure he probably had a radio and all of that, which really concerns me that something might have happened. Um, I want to go back over here real quick. I'm going to pull back. My, I need to see something. It's just that video made me feel worried, you know, when I saw it, because I'm like, okay, here he is going out on the boat on the 6th, so it's like everything's fine. That, I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's at 350. That was the, that was him going out, guys. It said that he went out on that day at 4 o'clock. That video was taken at 3.50. And that's his Facebook. I'm just going to keep praying. Because we have no idea. I can only imagine he probably has children. And so, you know, I just want to be respectful. Because we cannot imagine what they are going through. I just pray that they hear something soon. That was the last video. 13 seconds. That was the last video. Yeah. Because I can see the other videos on his timeline. And he, he obviously does have kids. My heart goes out to them. His most recent check-ins, he doesn't look like he's been updating that. 
um, let's see if I see any of the updates on the new. And there's a picture of his boat, which is the boat that we just talked about. It's on his timeline. There he is with the fish, the one that they shared. Um, he's got some pictures of the ocean. Now, um, I will say that four days ago, it looks like that he says that he was going to take a father-son trip on Sunday in sporty conditions to welcome him back to the salt. It's a little late this year, but spring has finally begun, and he takes a picture of his boat. That was four days ago. And a bunch of people reply that they plan on being out there too and that they plan on seeing him. So, you know, nothing about that sounds nefarious, you know, nothing about that sounds like there was anything going on, you know, that would lead us to believe that there was something of foul play. You know, he could just have had an accident. He could have ran into somebody nefarious, maybe while he was on the water, but he could have also just had boat trouble. We don't know. But what I do know is that it's very likely that tomorrow I'm going to call the Coast Guard tomorrow. Um, I had to call the Coast Guard to get the correct um, number to his boat because originally when I made the poster, Oak Island Police Department did put out his old boat information and his South Carolina hull number. And then I started seeing other posts from the Coast Guard and they were sharing a boat that looked very similar, but it had North Carolina, it had a North Carolina sticker on it, on the hull. And that matters tremendously when you're trying to track a boat. So I actually made a quick little phone call to them and um, I actually had somebody that answered my phone call and they were very nice and they confirmed with me that yes, they initially thought that was the boat, but then quickly realized it was the boat that he had sold because he had bought a new boat. And um, so they did need to update that part on the poster. And that's why this poster right here is the most accurate one with hull number NC4431F as in Frank, A as in Apple. If you see the South Carolina hull number poster that I made prior to this, please remove that when it is incorrect. And I apologize for any confusion. But if you do see this flyer, um, if you need a flyer, you can get it from my Facebook. If you don't have Facebook and you would like uh, to get a copy of this flyer, you can email me at duchessforthemissing at gmail.com and I'll put my banner up so you guys can see that. It's just you can't see the flyer really good with my with my banner running. But again, this is the boat here. The Cape Horn which is very nice. Victoria, you're on the West Coast. The search time limit, it can vary on what they believe the circumstances are, BHB. Um, like in Tyler's case, you know, with the weather factors, they take that into account, the temperature, um, the circumstances involved. You know, they ended the search for Tyler in 48 hours. The air, the air search. 
the air grid search and the boat search, they ended in 48 hours. But it can vary. I have seen the Coast Guard search for someone here for 72 hours and then call the search. Um, it just depends. So that's why I'm waiting to hear an update to see how long they'll plan to search for him. Hey, Beach Life. Thank you for being here. No worries, Taylor. No worries. Be kind and rewind. But if I can answer any questions, I'm happy to do it. I do hope that the Coast Guard will give us an update. But that is the area that he went to was Frying Pan Shoals. Now, I wonder if I can pull up. I'm going to try now to put in Black Sheep. Nope. Okay. Let me look at something here. Okay, here we go. By the way, did you know there's a guy that owns frying pan shoals? The 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 whole thing. Yeah, he bought it from the government. I didn't know that till somebody told me that. I forgot to tell y'all that. His name is Richard Neal. He paid $85,000 at an auction of the Twin Diamond Shoals, which is the frying pan tower. It's a twin of the Diamond Shoals. Okay, I can't see chat right now because I'm looking at my phone for something, but I'm trying to find. It's not pulling that up. I don't know. They say they're working to restore it. Interesting. I was trying to find about this black sh black sheep steeples area, but I'm not finding it. <clears throat> Maybe it's just something that they call a certain area of fishing. Yeah, I need I need my North Carolina fishermen people to hit me up and talk to us 
about all of these terms to give us an idea of what, what is going on in this. Okay, I thought I was going to be able to find some information, but really I just found a website about frying pan shoals. That was pretty much it. Um, please continue to pray that Jeffrey Kale is found. I'm looking right now to see if I see an update from the Coast Guard about him. Yeah, BHB, it, she says, it bugs me they haven't found the boat. Him, I can't accept, but there should be something on, yeah. And I have not heard anything, <coughs> which is kind of curious to me. Okay, I had to get out of it. Google's eating up all my... Um, yeah, they have not found his boat. Yeah, another boater. I know, I keep waiting for an update. I mean, I saw him out there searching again this morning. I thought, I'm surprised they were to see that they had, and it wasn't, it was only two. It was, I only saw two planes. But I was just riding past. I didn't, you know, stop and observe, but... um. That could have been it. I was thinking there might be an update by now. Let me see. No, everything was, I've already showed y'all the little 30 second clip. You know, there was, um, a month ago, there was a missing boater off of the Outer Banks and they suspended that search. So, I'm not seeing any. Wait a minute, here's a, no, that was, that's the same information. Let's see. Okay, so I just, okay, I did find this on my phone. It says, um, <clears throat> somebody's asking in this group that says, anyone know the numbers for Black Jack Hole? And this is like a boating group. And it says, hoping to go out of Southport this weekend. And I saw this guy's report that the Black Jack was hot. I have two maps and neither show coordinates. Uh, any help is appreciated. And then the guy gives him the latitude and the longitude. Hold the phone. Don't give Dutchie latitude and longitude. I wonder if it'll. Let me put that in.
do you know how far out of Southport? It's about 49 nautical, mile, uh, nautical miles. Southport Marina to Blackjack Hole is 51.3 nautical miles per my blue chart. See how this matters? <laughs> right? Hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, these earthquakes are crazy, y'all, for real. Okay, so... No, I don't want to do a path or a polygon. I don't want to add a place mark. I just want you to let me put in latitude and longitude. Will it let me do that? Probably not. Thirty-three point one one point two three zero. It won't. It won't even register. Uh, tools will let me do that. Explore uh, solar feasibility. No. Okay. Uh, listen, I am not Gray Hughes, y'all. Gray Hughes, where are you? I need you to come over here and do this map, sir. How can I do latitude and longitude? That's what I really need to do. What's the best way to do it? What's the best way to do it? Talk to me, chat. Talk to me about how I can put in this latitude and longitude. Google, lat, and longitude. I know, but I don't have Google Maps on my laptop. Okay, here we go. Three, three. We'll find out if this works. There's a will, there's a way. Can't stop, won't stop. Oh, snap. I don't want the altitude. Oh, Lord. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Hold on. Hold the phone. Okay. <clears throat> so, this... When the guy said, anyone know the numbers for Black Jack Hole? Because I heard it was hot for fishing. But I don't have the coordinates. And this guy in this, the whole truth. H-U-L-L. -L, that's the name of the group. Gives the coordinates. 51.3 nautical miles from Southport Marina. Is way <laughs> out there. Y'all, 
We're not talking about like he's close to shore at all. I mean, is he beyond the frying pan shoals? I think so. Or he's on the tip, right? I see that location on the opposite side of frying pan tower. This is the blackjack hole, correct? I've been told in the past the safest route to the tower from Southport is to head to the knuckle buoy and chart a route straight to the tower from there. You avoid the shoals. Is there a preferred route to the hole from Southport? See, y'all see what I'm saying? Like, you got to know. You got to know what you're doing out there. You can't just be like, I'm going to get in a boat and go out in the ocean and everything's jive. You know what I mean? Like, these are fishing places that if you charter boats where they would want to go to go get the fish. So you got to kind of be really familiar with what you're doing. Let's see. This guy here says, I'm headed out tomorrow. Anyone know the numbers for Blackjack Hole? I think I'm going to run out the river. I hope I don't hit a log like last time. What? He hit a log? My goodness. Um, another guy says it was really rough out there. The day that he went and told the guy to be careful. Mm. I don't know. Okay. okay I'm hopping back over here to y'all. See what y'all are saying. Sorry, I had to go down that rabbit hole. Yes, I <laughs> don't know. I'm I'm literally wink. Listen, I've I've spent a lot of time on boats. In fact, I almost went missing because of a boating accident. But I've never owned a boat because I feel like it's kind of like a swimming pool. It's one of those things that you buy and then you just pour money into it. <clears throat> and it has to do with water. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think we had a few people that said they felt that one up in New Jersey. Ooh, an 89. Good gracious. Oceans do have mean undercurrents. They sure do. Thank you, Beach Life. I appreciate you going over. If you can go over and sign Tyler's Beacon Law, it would really mean a lot for sure. Hey, rapper, I appreciate that so very much. Thank you for being here. And if anybody is on Facebook or if you guys see this on my YouTube community wall, please share this flyer for Jeffrey Kale. He is missing out of Oak Island, which is just right across the intercoastal waterway from Southport, North Carolina. That is Brunswick County. Uh, Jeffrey's been missing since April 7th at 2024. Um, at 3.50 p.m., we saw a video on his Facebook, and I might need to pull that up one more time just so we can uh, remember the last thing that he posted. I have not seen any updates from the Coast Guard, 
um, I really felt like there would be some type of update at this point, but I didn't see one. I'm going to check one more time before we get off here. Um, uh, but once again, I want to share my screen. Going down. Just being a fishing pole. Going down. Just being a fishing pole. By the way, did you see the electronics on this boat? Look at this. This dude right here has got better electronics than the South Carolina DNR. What do you know about that? So I feel like he definitely would have had some type of tracker or beacon system on there, right? I mean, this is high dollar equipment right here. Yes, no. Thank you, Ace. Thank you. Please pray for him. I mean, I just, I don't know. It really worries me. Yeah, well, that's true, Michelle. But this system right here, I mean, this is this is not a um, inexpensive boat, and it's not an old boat. Now, I listen. Work with me here. <laughs> work with me here. Take your head and turn it to the right. I know. I promise, y'all. I'm gonna put a clip on. I'm gonna make a clip. I'm gonna make a clip. I promise. Where you won't have to break your neck turning to the right. But if you look. You see how he's got those condominiums to the left of him? And then if you look straight out, it looks like there is an island with some trees on it. Do you see that? Can you guys see that? Let me see if I can enlarge it. Do y'all see his view out there? He's coming out of the waterway right there. Remember me showing y'all that? That was at, um, this video was at 3.50 on April the 6th. Yeah, that, it's like, a, it's kind of like, you know, when we walked out to the jetty, Michelle, you know, how it's just this, these little islands that are just kind of out there. Yeah, that's kind of how it is. He was riding out through the waterway. He was going to go out into the Atlantic, and he went a long way out there. And I think that's what scares me. Because um, it said they were checking that area, the blackjack hole. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know. Now, 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 listen, I just said you said 12 miles, and now you just told the chat it's 50 miles. <sighs> Y'all, it's more miles every time that the story gets told. I can't win. It was still two miles, y'all. It was still two miles. I'm going over here so that I can put this on the screen. <laughs> Yeah, that's the island directly. It's yes, not your neck, your battered shoulders. <laughs> that's what I feel like. I'm probably going to have to do stretches after trying to look at that video. I promise I'll get one where it's straightened out. 
Y'all, please continue to share this man's flyer, and I will keep you posted um, to let you guys know if we hear anything. And um, if you guys could put some um, some blue hearts and some prayer hands, maybe some anchors, because I do hope they find this man, and I hope he's he's alive. Um. Maybe he's just not able to reach out. Maybe he's maybe his boat has floated off somewhere, but he could still be alive. So we we can't give up hope yet because they haven't found anything. Um, but it does say between the fishing areas of Black Jack and Steeples. Michelle, it's it's Monday, and her math ain't mathing today. But I'm going to give her a break because I love her. <laughs> yeah. You Wait a minute. You need a recount on the miles. Well, you can come back out here and we can walk it you know, a couple times a week. It, I think we would be in great cardiac shape if, uh, if we did that for sure. I appreciate y'all spending a little bit of time with me to talk about this man. Um, I did, uh, tag Shay. Tyler's aunt in this, and uh, I did see that she had already shared it on her page, because I know that her heart broke. I just hope that they can get some justice and be able to find the answers and, and bring him home safe as soon as possible, and I hope the Coast Guard won't give up. I thought really they would have already posted something, um, and I am going to look one more time to make sure that I have um, not overlooked the Coast Guard of North Carolina sector. Um, the last thing that they posted uh, was the media press release eight hours ago. And that is simply, I'll go ahead and I'll just, I'll just show you guys that before we, before we pop out of here. This is from the United States Coast Guard News Department of Homeland Security press release, April 7th of 2024. Coast Guard searching for missing boater off North Carolina coast. Portsmouth, Virginia. <clears throat> the Coast Guard continues search efforts for a missing boater Sunday between Blackjack and Steeples, North Carolina. Missing is Jeffrey Kale, 47, from Clover, South Carolina, last seen around 4 p.m. Saturday aboard a white 32-foot Cape Horn center console boat departing the Southport Wildlife Boat Ramp. Coast Guard Sector North Carolina watch standers received a notification from Kale's family stating he was overdue from a fishing trip around 10.30 p.m. Rescue crews searching Coast Guard Air Station Elizabeth City HC-130 Hercules Airplane, Coastal Patrol Boat USCG Steelhead WPB-87324, and Coast Guard Station Oak Island 29-foot response boat small. If anyone has information, contact Sector North Carolina Command Center at 910 Three four three three eight eight zero. Hey, SWTC, thank you so much for joining us. Guys, please remember to hit the like button and share this stream out. 
to get awareness out for Jeffrey Kale and share his information on your social media if you see it out there. And I will bring you guys an update. Look for that on my Facebook or YouTube community wall. Or I might do a live stream or put out a short video, uh, depending on what we find out. So stay tuned on that. And um, I'm working on a couple of other cases right now. But I appreciate you choosing to spend a couple of hours here with me. We've been live for an hour and 43 minutes. And um, I hope everybody has a great week. And thanks so much for being here. And um, if you're on the replay, thanks so much for watching this on the replay. Um, let me know your thoughts. Leave me a comment um, in the comment section. And I hope you guys have a great day. And I will catch you guys soon. Um, and don't forget, if you need a missing flyer, or if you have a case you want me to cover, just email me at Duchess for the Missing at gmail.com or you can send me a message on facebook messenger and i want to thank all the moderators michelle bhb um ally she popped in here i don't know if she's still here or not she might still have been working she probably just got to the house um I appreciate all of y'all being here and Beach Life. Thank you so much for joining the Internet Investigator. Um, I did put out a Discord link. Those are for my top three tiers. Um, if that's just a perk that I offer where we um, have all the different cases and we can chat. There's a public place to chat. There's a member's place to chat. Just remember, I need the link to your YouTube channel. You can find that on your about wall. Um, you can copy that link and send it to me um, if you're a member. And um, you can pick that link up on the membership YouTube community wall post. I just updated that. Um, so if you want to come over to Discord, you can. If you don't Discord, it's all good. It's just a place for people to hang out and talk about cases. And sometimes we post uh, funny memes and we talk about earthquakes and... Um, we have a place where we can pray. We we do all kinds of cool stuff over there. So um, I appreciate you uh, joining Beach Life. And I um, also want to say uh, thank you to um, all of the new members. Island Girl gifted a membership. And Cupcakes was the recipient of that. So I didn't get to play my membership video. So since we're on our way out, I am... Um, I'm going to uh, play the little membership video for you guys. So let me get this brand sticker off of here and I'll do that. And then I'll take us on out of here. So, um, but I appreciate you guys spend a little bit of time with me to hear about Jeffrey Kills missing case here off the coast of North Carolina. So welcome, welcome, welcome to all of our new members. You better not run, better not hide, better off keeping demons inside. Better not shout, you better not cry, you know it's on your criminal mind. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate y'all so very much. <laughs> Nana's old mod. <laughs> oh my gosh. Where can I sign up for voice modulation and elocution classes with Duchess? Um, just see me in Discord. <laughs> I really appreciate y'all. Take care of yourself. Be kind. It's free. It doesn't cost anything to just shh. So I'll catch you guys later. Take care of yourself and each other. Bye, everybody.